Awesome. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, can everybody hear me? Great. So first of all, how many people here are familiar with Hyperledger Besu? Some, most everybody? Great. How many people have used Hyperledger Besu? Awesome. So we have a pretty uh, Besu familiar crowd, and that's fantastic. So today I'm just going to give a brief overview of what's going on in Besu and some things that we're excited about. So if you don't know what Besu is, Besu is an enterprise-grade Ethereum execution client uh, designed to work on both mainnet and in permissioned Ethereum settings. So I have a picture of Janus, if you know who that is, the, the ancient Roman god, uh, looking back on the new year and the old year, and sort of Besu looks at both mainnet and permissioned Ethereum. So many people are sort of under the misconception that you know, Hyperledger is only about you know, permission blockchain and it has nothing to do with Ethereum. But it turns out there's a long history of Ethereum and Hyperledger uh, working together and, and having a lot in common. So do people remember Burrow? Uh, some people, yeah. So Burrow is sort of the first explicit Ethereum project in Hyperledger. Uh, but Hyperledger and Ethereum have worked together and been involved together for quite some time at this point. Um, so more about what I said about the execution client. So with the merge, Ethereum is transitioning to a, a modular blockchain design with consensus clients and execution clients. So if you're familiar with blockchain architecture, you know that you have you know, a consensus component of your blockchain and a, a smart contract execution component of your blockchain. And Ethereum is separating these two out into a modular protocol. So are people familiar with this in general? Awesome. So, you know, maybe you've seen some of the consensus clients, uh, and of course, the execution clients, uh, Besu is one of them. So, one thing to note is if we look at the popularity of these clients, right? So, you can see the consensus clients, uh, you know, Prism and Lighthouse are popular. Uh, but for the execution clients, Geth has almost an 80% market share. So, we see Besu has, you know, about a 7% share on mainnet right now. Uh, which is great, but, but we would like that to be larger. And the, the problem with this, as is, is the client diversity website points out, is that if there's a bad bug in Geth, uh, it could bring down the whole main net. And due to the slashing mechanism, when the, net, when the network came back up, when the bug was fixed, there would be lots and lots and lots of ETH slashed, which would just be a disaster for the network. So the Ethereum Foundation, to sort of address this problem of client diversity, uh, started a grant program for clients, and Besu was chosen as one of the clients. Uh, and most grants, you know, you all are probably familiar with, with how grants work. You know, people give you money to do something. And most grants in this space were pretty straightforward because single companies or organizations were responsible for client development. Um, <laughs> these projects in general may be open source, where the code base is open source, but they're not true open development where anyone can join, anyone can contribute, and anyone can attain a leadership role like Hyperledger or Linux Foundation projects. So the Besu execution client incentive program is written for a true open development project. We had to spend a lot of work on this, but the summary is that anyone who shows a sustained pattern over time of important contributions to Besu features that benefit mainnet can get rewarded with grant money. Um, so, you know, if you want to contribute to Besu in the long run, you can participate in this program. And we have everything online, and you can read all the details and exactly what this takes. So, you know, rather than hear all of this in more detail for me, you know, we thought we would have Tim Baiko, who manages the Core Devs group at Ethereum, uh, tell you about this. Unfortunately, he couldn't make it today uh, because, well, if you all are familiar, the merge is happening very soon, and Ethereum is all hands on deck for that. Uh, so no one is traveling. Uh, but Tim uh, very nicely agreed to tell us some of his thoughts on Besu. So we'll go ahead and hear from him. Hi, everyone. My name is Tim Bako. I coordinate the All Core Devs call 
uh, which is which are the calls where all the client teams working on the Ethereum protocol get together to discuss and implement changes to the protocol. And I wanted to take a few minutes today to talk about BASU, the merge, and this client incentive program. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't make it in person. Um, as you're all probably aware, the merge is happening this week, so um, I I couldn't travel during this week. Um, but yeah, hopefully take a few minutes to walk through um, BASU, uh, its role in the ecosystem, and, and, and how we've kind of structured the incentive program to, to support it. Um, you know, I actually, before working uh, on coordination across all the clients, was working on the BASU team. I once was a BASU maintainer. Um, and I think, you know, BASU um, helped kind of make Ethereum accessible to like a, a, a large number of users who um, maybe weren't as in touch uh, with the Ethereum mainnet through its large enterprise program. And at the same time, did this without compromising on supporting the Ethereum network. Uh, so from the very start, basically, was kind of designed to, designed to be an enterprise-grade client that would support mainnet and that would keep kind of pushing and innovating there. Um, and it's been really great to see what uh, you know what, what what the client has done over the years, um, from starting from being only owned by consensus and, and kind of a very bare bones client um, that, that could sync mainnet in archive mode and offer some enterprise features to now being kind of a thriving project within the Hyperledger ecosystem uh, that have helped lead some of the most important and impactful changes to Ethereum, such as EIP 1559, um, and having also like a set of maintainers that, that spans multiple organizations. Um, so, you know, I think Basu is really a great example that you can have people with very different backgrounds coming in, contributing to the same code base and making this kind of a better product, um, all while kind of staying aligned with, with the general vision of, of openness uh, that, that, Ethereum, that Ethereum believes in. Um, and, you know, to take a minute to talk about the incentive program, um, basically the Ethereum Foundation has wanted to kind of provide a, an incentive package so that teams and individuals working on these clients feel like they can share upside in, in, in Ethereum if, uh, if they keep maintaining this and, and, and keeping the network running. Um, so I think this was first in 2020, uh, there was a, an incentive client put together for the, the teams working on the beacon chain. And in 2021, we decided to extend this to all of the client teams. So including Basu and the other teams working on the, the current proof of work or, or execution layer chain. Um, and for every team, it was it was quite straightforward because there's only a single single organization that kind of owns the client. So we could simply put out a grant to them and 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 kind of run with that. Um, but with basically it took a bit more work, but I think I think I'm, I'm pretty happy with the structure we've arrived at where today, you know, we have a structure with basic incentive program where there are many organizations who will receive the funds uh, from consensus to Hyperledger and, and others. And there's a path for people to come and be kind of contributors to BASU, then become maintainers and eventually also receive rewards as part of this program. Um, so that's really something that's important to me and why I think it was worth spending the past six to nine months tweaking the program to make it work right for BASU. Um, and I'm quite happy with, with what we've got. So um, the program is live, it's running. Um, all the validators uh, have, have been set up. Uh, we have kind of the smart contract set up to split the funds across the different ecosystem participants. And yeah, to me, this is really a, a, a very cool example of what we can do by, you know, having these innovative programs uh, on Ethereum and, and kind of adapting them to communities and, and open source projects that, that work in a very open way across multiple organizations. Um, so yeah. Thank you again for, 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 for the opportunity to speak here. Um, I'm sorry I couldn't do it in person directly, but I hope to see you all at DEF CON in just a couple of weeks. Cheers. All right, uh, thank you very much. And you know, the most important thing about a conference is not necessarily the talks, it's meeting people and knowing people. Uh, so when you have a question, you know, you know who to talk to. So, for that reason, I'd like to introduce some of the Ethereum maintainers. I'm sorry, the, the BASU maintainers. Um, so if you all could stand up, please, uh, if you're there. So uh, wave to everybody. Uh, so I think we have Diego, Dano, Francisco, and Matt. So 
If you're interested in Besu, uh, please come find these folks. They are wonderful, and they will answer all your questions. So thank you very much.